This is about questions that I still have about these bombs, even though I've been doing them for a while, <laughs> and um, definitely looking for answers for all of them. So this is also going to be a very short talk, uh, and it's going to be essentially posing questions and not giving too many answers. <laughs> uh, before I go there, uh, some of you may know that I'm involved somehow in SPDX3, which was released earlier this year and earlier this week, the next version, and I have a deep dive presentation on Wednesday for people who want to go there. And for people who are involved or interested in SPDX, we're going to have a physical face-to-face get-together sometime tomorrow. I'll be sending an email right after uh, tomorrow afternoon. So, um, as I said, I've been doing as bomb since yeah a dozen years or so now, and I've been doing open source, and this is in quotes because back then we didn't call it open source, uh, but I've been involved since '83, so I tend to have a somehow longer-term view of things happening, <laughs> right? And uh, uh, triggered by uh, the thing that Linus mentioned in the keynote this morning, I have seen and unfortunately participated in all the things that you've heard. Uh, Unix war, BSD wars, programming language wars, which is better, and definitely editor wars, uh, which one you have to work and do, you have to use, right? So, and uh, so, Somehow, being a little older, um, we found out that spending your time discussing on Usenet, if you it's VI or Emacs, this the better thing, is not a very productive use of your time. So, uh, yeah, uh, maybe we should learn things in the SBOM uh, space. So, but there has been lots of progress in SBOM, and I'll be highlighting only a couple of things there. And I realize there's no clock here, so let me have the phone open. Um, so one of the major things is that we discussed software life cycle, right? We, were been, we have been talking uh, about S-bombs for, you know, uh, more than a decade. And at some point we realized that we were talking about different things. And uh, uh, so, in the last couple of years, we introduced this uh, whole idea that, hey, if you're looking at the software cycle, uh, life cycle, there are different things happening in your software, and each one of them may have a different view in S-BOMs, right? So, it's a different thing to talk about uh, the S-BOM when you develop software, or the S-BOM when you uh, release software, or may be different, right? You, you may care about different things. So this was one of the uh, uh, major uh, wins that we got as a community in S-Bombs. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, CISA came out with this uh, S-Bomb types categorization that, you know, for different things inside the circle, uh, you have uh, uh, different types of S-Bombs. You know, these are one of the uh, major wins, right? Uh, the other thing that should have been there is also the minimum SBOM content, right? We spent lots of lots of times and years discussing what should be inside an SBOM and what should the format, the exact format be, uh, but we've never really um, <laughs> agreed on what will be the minimum thing. And now we have a set of minimum information that has to go in there, right? Uh, but we still have lots of questions about these bombs. At least I have, right? And uh, but we need to have more discussions about that and come up with uh, some way to address them. So uh, I'll be just mentioning, as I said, I'll be mentioning lots of open questions. So, what's the scope? And um, you haven't just mentioned this already in her talk, right? When we're talking about an S-bomb, right? Uh, for which projects do we produce an S-bomb, right? I'm a company organization that I produce software, right? 
for which of my software do I produce an SBOM? Only for the proprietary license one or for everything that I release in open source? Uh, even if I only do contributions, do I have to produce an SBOM for this one? Right. Uh, for which customers do I produce an SBOM? And there is a different sense of questions about distribution right afterwards. Right. And when do we generate it? Do we generate it when we actually release software? Do we generate it regularly? Do we introduce it uh, inside our CD, you know, continuous delivery uh, workflow? Right. Um, and then this is okay. Uh, that was uh, what the scope of the SBOM. And what do we want to put in the SBOM? Right. Uh, do we want to put only the NTII minimum elements? Do we want to put everything that we know? Right. And which components do we list in SBOM? Do we list only what we produce? Do we list the top level dependency, the transitive dependencies, even dependencies that we do not distribute but we expect to be there because they are dependencies even though. So the whole idea, you know, an SBOM is um, a bill of materials for software, this implies that this is only the things that are inside the software. But you have dependencies that are not inside the software, but you definitely want to know about that. Right. Um, so, or does it actually, the answer and whatever you're doing, does it depend on the use case? Right. Uh, and sometimes you do one and sometimes you do something else. Right. Um, then, visibility. Let's say that we have decided the first two uh, uh, sets of questions and we, once we produce an S-bomb, okay, what do we do with it? Do we publish it? Is it visible for everyone? Uh, even license and legal texts. Remember, we're not talking only about open source uh, uh, licensed components, right? We definitely have non-open source proprietary, proprietary software. Uh, inside software. Uh, so uh, how do you uh, make sure that uh, people who have visibility to the SBOM are the people who are allowed to see, for example, the legal text, right? Um, because the SBOM should have license information, right? Uh, and then the delivery of SBOMs. Um, uh, uh, so once you actually produce that, Right. Uh, how do you actually distribute them? Right. Do you deliver them alongside your software? Right. If you are, you are in the wonderful uh, old days that you were distributing a CD with a software inside, do you put it inside? <laughs> right. Uh, do you put it on a website? And if this website is it, you know, publicly available, uh, uh, everyone can see all your S bombs. Uh, is it access control? Only your customers can see them. And if they have bought the, or if they have purchased, if they have a separate, uh, a specific commercial agreement for a specific software, then they get the uh, uh, access to the SBOM of this particular software, right? And you know, again, the visibility that I uh, mentioned before, right? Um, this is the only thing that some tech uh, considerations may get into uh, 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 in the big picture. Because, for example, if you are delivering uh, the S-bomb, then it's harder to actually reference different other S-bombs, right? If you have everything online and accessible, uh, uh, then especially, you know, uh, if you're talking about interconnected linked data, and all this stuff, uh, then it's much easier if you have it all in there. Uh, but again, this is, uh, this is the only minor technical detail. All these questions that I'm just throwing at you uh, are essentially, you know, operational uh, questions or policy uh, decisions that you have to make. And then we have the very large part of legal, which I will not expand too much, but uh, okay, the basic uh, information and the basic uh, uh, categories of questions that are handled the legal part is what legal ramifications 
uh, do as bomb statements have, right? When you are producing as bomb, you essentially say something about your software, right? And so as we all know, nothing is perfect, so there might be inaccurate information there. And what are the legal ramifications there? And I have spent way too much time discussing with attorneys in my company, uh, discussing every aspect of that, right? So what if you are missing information from the list of uh, materials that you have? If you have some error in the information, or if you put information that is not there. So if I'm saying that uh, this software includes things that are not actually included there, right? What does all this have to say? Uh, uh, what does all this mean uh, in the uh, legal uh, discussions of things? Because uh, when you're producing as bomb, you're essentially stating something, facts about uh, your software. And when you're stating stuff, yeah, you are responsible for what you're saying. Right. So, Lots of questions. All these questions have nothing to do with most of what has been discussed uh, in uh, the different working groups that have been working for, you know, a dozen years on S on S bombs. Luckily, uh, we're seeing much much progress on these ones. Right. Um, we haven't seen many answers of all of them, and I definitely do not have the answers. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, we have already seen uh, initiatives starting tackling these things, right? Whether they are under the auspices of uh, Open Chain and they have the processes of, you know, how to produce an S bomb and what to do with that. And there are specific groups, for example, uh, the Telco group that is producing. This is how we want to do it, or is it? a specific, you know, uh, industry area or uh, uh, localized. We heard that in Japan there are uh, specific rules or um, there might be rules or it might be, you know, a consensus. This is how we do it, right? Uh, I don't think in any of the questions that I've uh, presented uh, there are, you know, right or wrong answers, right? It's just that you have to decide whatever you do, right? And it's, it would be great if our whole, you know, software supply chain industry, if you want to call it uh, this way, if we get some consensus, right? Because if we start diverging and each one of them, each one of us uh, decides on an answer, we're going to produce an S-bomb with this uh, setup, right? Saying only our software and we only give it to the people who ask for it and stuff like that, right? And another organization or company or whatever uh, answers differently the same questions, then, you know, interoperability will not be <laughs> as great. And, you know, we've been working so hard in order to make this happen for everyone. And uh, we should start uh, discussing uh, much of these uh, questions in my view rather than, you know, details about technical stuff. And that was very quick, and that was all. We have questions. Yes. What's better, SPDX or Cypress? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Exactly the message I tried to go through. <laughs> to, to go through. I, I do have a real question. Some of it is becoming mandatory, like CRA. Mm -hmm. um, like, as I mean, you pointed out, the, uh, the Japanese Japan. uh, material is not a regulation at this time. Uh, in your experience, based on all these years, even though you don't have answers <laughs> to that stuff, in your experience, do you think in the s bomb market we're going to get more international clarity soon, or will it continue to fragment? <laughs> That's a great question. So the question, if I have to repeat it for <laughs> the mic, yeah, uh, is we're getting more and more regulations and uh, 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 frameworks that uh, say what you have to do, but these are also, uh, you know, piecewise. 
and uh, whether we're going to be seeing something towards a unified view or something. Uh, the answer is obviously I do not know. Uh, I think the, the people who draft the regulations and discuss it, right, they need input and they need input from us, right? I'm not, I'm sure they also do not have the answers, right? And if they come up with an answer of, to the questions that, to any of the questions that I uh, mentioned before, right, this will have to be influenced by us, right? So I think we should be doing the first step to think about what needs to be done, right? And then slowly try to express this to the regulators, right? Because I don't think the regulators will also come, you know, out of thin air and say, okay, your answer is this and this and this, right? They, uh, they're expecting input from us. And definitely in the CRA uh, example, we saw that, you know, initially it started and then there were lots of discussions and somehow heated discussions. And yeah, uh, I think it, it was shown and even the, uh, the other, the AI act, it was shown that you can definitely influence, right? If you uh, uh, can express an opinion, they can, they will hear you, right? You might not get everything, but yeah, uh, you definitely should voice an opinion, an opinion. So I don't think the regulations appear out of nowhere without uh, anybody getting involved. And the more that we get involved, the problem is that even if now, you know, somebody comes and say, I want to, write a new re regulation, what should I put in here? We do not know what to answer, right? Because as an industry, as a, you know, as a, we do not have consensus and all of that, right? We all have some views on that, but yeah. So we should be having this discussion more and more amongst ourselves. Okay, so uh, the question essentially is, you know, what do you put inside the SBOM, right? Uh, typically now, uh, we, uh, a typical software has open source components and has proprietary components, right? And what do you put inside the SBOM, right? So, uh, again, this is something that it's not, uh, we haven't reached a consensus yet. I can tell you that what my company is doing is that it produces an accurate SBOM containing everything, containing all proprietary information in there, right? On the other hand, on the other discussion, on the other questions is that we do not make it publicly available. We only give it to the people who receive the software. So this is the decisions that, you know, we have taken, but it's not obviously no, it's sure, but the customers are buying your CPUs and so on. Right. So the, the customers that are getting our software, they are getting a complete SBOM of this software that they're getting, right? Which lists all proprietary software, right, in their uh, components. When I'm saying proprietary, it's, only, it's not only ours, right? We also use third-party proprietary software. But yeah, they're getting a complete SBOM. For that one. But, yeah. Is there any active community who is already working on this that can help you perhaps? Because, right, we know what are the challenges uh, here. Actually, the intent of me coming here to ask these questions, despite that you are the person back to us. <laughs> Great. Right. So the question is, is there any specific community that is handling all this stuff? And the answer is that not only one, there are many. <laughs> and some of them at least started as a 
very sector specific, for example, the open chain telco group, which was a telco organization, telecommunication organization, and they say, okay, let's start with us that we are a small group and we know what we want to do and we'll set up what we are doing, right? So there are these, you know, uh, sector-based groups, right? They're definitely, uh, you know, uh, geographically based group. We, we heard about uh, Japan earlier, right? So uh, I do not know of a wide open, you know, community encompassing everyone that these are discussed, right? We should have, but yeah, and there are, we have communities that uh, we are uh, discussing these things, but we have to be more open about it. I don't think that any of these communities think that they, are, they should be closed and, you know, uh, what is being produced for the open chain telco. Again, I'm saying this because they have definitely uh, tackled lots of these questions, right? I don't think they're saying that only telco can use this stuff, right? It, all of our all of the communities that I know are open and are willing to share on this. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, how do we encourage uh, like open source projects and other builders to use build time analysis for S bombs rather than uh, analysis based? Oh. <laughs> because the quality differs uh, drastically. Yes. So how do you encourage open source? Uh, projects to actually use all the stuff uh, that we're talking about. And I think the answer there would be uh, have painless tools, tools that they can be used painlessly and transparently and they can just click something and automatically they get the answer, right? Because as we've seen time and again, right, when you want to force something, you know, and you, they have to do more work, it doesn't work this way, right? So yeah, it has to be as smooth as possible. And yeah, there are lots of efforts <laughs> for tools about that. Right. So essentially the question is, even if I decide on such things, right, how do I uh, uh, make the rest of our wonderful supply chain, software supply chain, <laughs> also do it, right? And again, there is no magic bullet. You cannot do it automatically, right? So you're starting doing it, you know, uh, by discussing, by trying to convince them. Uh, essentially at some point, uh, you can, the idea will be uh, that it can be part of a contractual obligation, right? Uh, we have seen it definitely, in, again, in uh, specific sectors. Automotive sector is a well-known example, right? That, you know, when they're asking for, so when someone asks for software, they also ask for this one. And it's in the same uh, uh, contractual obligation, right? The, again, the wonderful idea will be at some point, this will be obvious for everyone. <laughs> Whenever you get in software, you're also getting this meta information uh, about those bombs. But uh, yeah, we're not there yet. Right. So right now it's just, uh, you know, you politely ask until you <laughs> not so politely ask and then you enforce and then you say, we don't do business with you if you don't do it. And yeah, okay, this is all discussions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> commercial. Right, so again, um, I think we have spent disproportionately amount of effort trying to define all the 
uh, idea or uh, everything inside as bombs and we have not spent so much effort in the tooling part right uh, there are tools that obviously there are tools that create as bombs there are tools that analyze as bombs there are tools that verify as bombs and all this stuff right we do not have wonderful tools transparent that can you just plug into whatever development environment you're using and you can use them, right? So, uh, and this also brings, because you mentioned that uh, once you get the S-bomb, I don't, hmm? What to do, and the other related question is, do you trust it, right? So, yeah, this also needs to, uh, you know, the whole, uh, SBOM supply chain, besides the software supply chain, also has to be defined somehow. Yeah. And we're done at the top of the hour. Thank you very, very much for the discussion.